Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about rotations, probably the scariest of the rigid transformations, like the one that don't change sides. So translations, rotations, and reflections. Rotations are probably the one that scare the most people, but they're not nearly as difficult as they seem. But when you first come at them, they absolutely do. A few things that you need to know. First off, it's helpful to know what X and Y do in each of the quadrants. So this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. And by quadrants, I just mean the X, Y axis, by the way. So this is like one fourth of it, that sort of thinking. One, two, three, and quadrant four. Now in quadrant one, it's gonna be X and Y. When you move to quadrant two, it still stays positive on the Y, but you'll see it goes to the left of the Y axis, which makes the X negative. So any points over here are gonna have negative, x positive y. Now quadrant 3 is like the bizarro quadrant. Everything is negative down here. So negative x's, negative y's, and then finally quadrant 4. You're positive for the x's finally, so we're back to positive x's, but you're still below this x-axis, so you're negative on your y's. The other thing you need to know is what 90 degree rotations mean in 270. Usually you'll see, as long as they're about the origin, which is what this is about, to so this point there, um, you'll see 90 degrees, 180, 270, and 360. Now 360 is just that full rotation. It goes right back to where it started. 180 is half. And by the way, these are, um, the way I'm going right now is counterclockwise. So if you go this way, it's also the same. So it's just gonna go, for instance, this one goes from here to here. So it goes halfway around, so I know it's 180 degrees. 90 is just one, really. So may have been starting here and I'm going here. So it moves one quadrant. I'm gonna put one quad. This one moves two. This one moves three quad. 270, it's like it starts here and it goes all the way down to here. And the 360, of course, goes four quadrants. Now you have to think, okay, counterclockwise or clockwise, so that matters. This is a counterclockwise the equivalent to that would be, this would be a clockwise rotation. So it doesn't quite go all the way around. And then this one would be going this way. Just think of a clock, that's how you do it. So for the first questions, they're gonna ask me, so what rotation is it? So the first thing I'm gonna do is just count how many quadrants it moves. It goes one, two. So that means it's gonna be 180 degree rotation, and it doesn't actually matter if it's uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. I can't actually tell based on how it's set up here um, because I don't have any more information. So it's 180 degrees about the origin. This video focuses only on origin rotations, not around a single point or anything else, just FYI. This one, I'm just going to pick a point, and I'll pick this U right here. Um, I need to know, am I going from this U with Mark or the other one? So the original point before the rotation will be marked just as normal. So this is U. U prime, that's what that little line means there. This is after. So you always want to go from the standard version to prime. So I'm starting here and I'm going this way. I'm moving one quadrant. And I'm moving in the same way as a clock because it goes like this. So this is a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin, if that matters to you here. So let's go to the next one. So for this one, I'm going to delete this real fast. There we go. I'm going to start at D because I like to pick a point that's sort of in the middle of a quadrant as opposed to one that's on the axis. It's harder to tell. 
So I'm gonna go from the D here all the way down here. So that looks like a 90 degree rotation because I'm only moving one quadrant and it's clockwise. So like my other answer before, it's a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. Now what, what other types of questions might you get? So for this one, they're gonna wanna know, well, what's the new um, figure look like? How do I know kind of how that goes? I'm gonna skip this one and go on to the next one real fast because it's only a single point. I'll make it easier to start. Here's F, and I want to make F prime. So I'm going to do 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now here's a rule. If you rotate 180 degrees or 360 degrees, X and Y in terms of the numbers or placement, that's a better word to use here, stay. So if you started with 3, 5, one of them may be negative and one of them be positive, but 3 and 5 would still be the order. If you're going to do 90 or 270, oh my pen decided to have a little moment there. X and Y. Switch. Say I have this point right here. It's not very far away from the x-axis, right? But if I rotate this down like this, it's going to be further away from the x-axis, but it's going to be closer to the y. So it's going to be somewhere like down in here. So it used to be 1, 2, 3, and 1 would probably be the equivalent of 1 and 3 with, of course, that, x, that y value being negative now. So that's why that works that way. So if you can remember, switch them for your answer for X and Y, and then for the rest, uh, for 180 and 360, they're gonna stay in the same order. Doesn't mean the signs are gonna stay the same. I do these in two steps. Step one, do I need to change them? This is a 90 degree rotation, so yes. So what was, I start here, Switch, question mark. So I'm starting at the point one, one, two, three, four, one, negative four. So I'm gonna switch after step one because it's 90 degrees. So then I'm gonna put this here and this here. And then I have to think, okay, so what's gonna be, what are the changes that I'm going to need to make on the science in terms of what new quadrant it's going to be in? So tip two, adjust signs for new quadrant. So there's my first step. Here's my starting point. So I'm gonna go counterclockwise, which means this way, about the origin in 90 degrees. So I'm gonna move from quadrant four, where I would have had X and negative Y, up to the first quadrant, where everything should be positive. So I'm gonna make this four and one, because everything should be positive there. Now you will find um, rotation rules on papers and things, and let's see if that uh, kind of suggests the same thing. So the rule for a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation is negative y x, which means switch the order, which we did, and then that original y value that you had, you had to change the sign. This negative doesn't actually mean negative, it just means opposite. So it used, so we started with one, negative four. We're gonna switch them, so it'll be negative four, one, and then it says change this sign, so opposite this. So the opposite of negative is a positive, so our final answer is going to be four and one. So you can see that it's there. But if you don't like the rules or can't remember the rules, if you could just think, what are the, what's the nature of a um, point in the plane that I'm about to go in, you can make the adjustment yourself. So switch the signs if necessary, and then adjust for the new quadrant. So let's look at another one. And if you want to pause this and take a screenshot of any of this, go ahead. I'm going to clean this page off so it's not such a mess. All right. 
So now we're doing 180 degrees about the origin. So step, oop, things being a little squirrely today. Step one is do we switch? Now remember, this is 180 degrees. It's not 90, it's not 270. So the answer to that question is no. So we're starting at point two, negative four. So start. So step one is gonna be same thing, two, negative four, we don't need to switch. Step two, adjust signs. So 180 degrees means we're going to move two quadrants, one, two. So now we're in quadrant two. And remember, in quadrant two, we have negative x's and positive y's. So I'm going to change this around. So negative x here and positive four. So my new point is at negative two and four. What's the rule say? So let's go back and look at the rule. In case you're using the rules, you can see where they come from. The rules for 180 degree rotation would be negative x and negative y. Now that's the original x and y. So the original x was two, so I need to make that negative and it stays the same, so I did. And the original y was negative four, so I need to make it positive because negative times negative is positive. So there it is. So if you wanna use step one, step two, that works just as well as the rules. Sometimes it's actually a little bit less confusing. Let's do one more. Do see if I have any with tri with the whole triangle. There we go. So for this one, we're just going to pick the points, and I'm going to go ahead and name them, or give them their values, or whatever you want to call it. One, two, three, four. So it's four and one, two, three, four, five. That way, I know the starting points. I'll always write these. This one is two and zero, and this one is, of course, zero and two. Now, 180 degrees is kind of boring. So let's change that to 270 degrees. Why don't we? Might make it a little bit more interesting. I do not know. So for four, five, start one, step one, step two. So I'm starting at four, five. Remember, step one is do I need to switch? So this is the switch question. Now, originally, since it was 180, it wouldn't, but this time it is, so 270 degrees, I am gonna switch them. So I'm gonna say yes. So I'm gonna put five, four. Never stop there, because that's hardly ever the right answer. Um, if we're doing a rotation 270, let's go counterclockwise. So we're gonna start here, counterclockwise goes this way. So we go one, two, three. So now we're down in that quadrant four, where x values are positive and y values are negative. So x value stays the same, y value goes to negative four. Not bad. All right, let's look at the second point. We'll do E now. Start. E is two, zero. Step one, do we need to switch? Yeah, we do because it's a 270 degree rotation. So I'm gonna make it O2. And then I have to think, do I need to make any adjustments for signs? So adjust signs as needed. This one's a little more complicated. We're doing a counterclockwise. We're gonna go one, two, three. So we're gonna be down here somewhere and that means we are negative y, but zero doesn't really matter, you don't have to change it. So this goes zero, negative two. And then finally, I'm gonna use yellow even though it doesn't really look great on this paper. Start, my point is zero, two. That's this point right here, I'm in doing G right now. 
Step one is, do we need to switch the signs? And the answer to that question is yes, because we're doing a 270 degree rotation. So two, zero. And number two, do I need to adjust any of the signs? So counterclockwise from here goes one, two, three. So positive X's and then the zero doesn't matter. It's already got a positive X and the zero doesn't matter. So my final point would be there. So my final triangle will be at five, one, two, three, four, five, negative four here, zero and negative two, and then two and zero. So E actually happens to be G prime. This is F prime and this is E prime. And this is really difficult to draw straight lines on, so I apologize for how bad this is going to inevitably look. But there you go. So there are the th things that you might want to think about if you're confused about the rules. First, step one is always, do I need to switch the order of X and Y's as it's given? If the answer is, or if the rotation is about the origin, 360 or 180, the answer is no, keep them. If the order is, if the rotation is 90 degrees or 270, the answer is, yeah, you need to switch them. The second step is just to adjust for the new quadrant. So that may mean, so you have to think like, okay, where is this going to be plotted if you only see points instead of having it visually there. But if you're moving, if you're going to move into quadrant two, you need to make sure that that X value is negative, that Y value is positive. If it's three, everything should be negative. If it's moving to quadrant one, everything's positive. It's moving to quadrant four, those X values are positive, but those Y values are negative. Just making those little adjustments visually might help you if you're really confused about how to use the rules. By the way, let's test the rules for these. A 270 degree rotation, the rule for it, if it's counterclockwise, is y and negative x. Incidentally, 270 degrees counterclockwise is the same as 90 degrees clockwise. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to, so four, five, I'm gonna change the sign on that original x to negative four and move it, oh, I did. And then the original y is gonna change, but it's come to the front. That seems to all match up. Uh, so it looks like the rule absolutely does work. So that's it, rotations about the origin.